and wound up just Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Plaid Crafts. We are here with yet another fun painting lesson. Welcome to Monday Night Paint Night Live. And in the studio with me today, I have Dylan Estes. Hey, Dylan. Hey, everybody. Dylan's all mic'd up and ready to help me tonight. So we're going to uh, have a real fun project for you. We're going to paint Frosty's Girlfriend. So many of us this time of year with snow on the ground and cold temperatures outside, all we do is think about the snow and maybe getting outside with the little kids and building a snowman. But tonight we're not going to build a snowman. <clears throat> we're going to paint a snow lady. We're going to paint Frosty's Girlfriend tonight. So uh, Dylan, if you want to um, go Overhead, I'll give them a real quick close-up of our project before we actually begin painting. This is Frosty's girlfriend, and she is painted on a six by six, uh, just artist stretch canvas. So we're gonna have a lot of fun with that tonight. And I, for tonight, am gonna just be painting on a cotton um, canvas panel. So I've transferred my pattern, and this is how my pattern has been transferred. I did not do the detail of like the, um, the little stone um, mouth and I also didn't do like the eyelashes just the basic lines you'll also notice that I did not transfer the little tassel here because we're going to paint all of our background if you did transfer any of those things don't worry we'll work around that tonight but let's just jump right into our project we're going to be using folk art matte acrylics tonight. If you have folk art multi-surface, that's fine too. Let's go ahead, if, for those of you that are painting along with me, let's go ahead and get out a pretty good sized dollop of paint. And the color that I'm going to first use is wicker white. So if you're painting along, go ahead and get your wicker white out. And also, you can go ahead and get a little bit of true blue out. You don't need a lot of true blue. And while, like I said, Dylan here is in the studio with me tonight. If you have any questions, be sure and uh, type them in the chat. We are filming simultaneously both on YouTube as well as Plaid Crafts Facebook page. So Dylan's going to be watching both channels and both uh, social areas there. So if anyone has a question or a comment that you'd like to relate to me, go ahead and type it in. And Dylan's going to do his best to either try and answer the question or pass it along to me. Sounds good. We got Our, a bunch of people view in. Great. Uh, we got about 40 people on YouTube right now. So yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in on a Monday night. I hope you are going to paint along with me, uh, whether you do tonight or paint along another time. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Let's start in on our little girlfriend's face and her body first. So I'm going to take a large brush. This is a three quarter inch flat brush that I have in my hand here. And I am brushing into the puddle of white. Again, this is wicker white. <clears throat> and I'm filling the both sides of the brush. I want the brush good and full of the white paint. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little hint of blue around the outside of her face area. So we're going to dip a corner of that brush into our blue and then we're going to come back here and blend on the palette. I do not want a very strong, strong blue. It's going to be a very pale blue. So we're going to use a lot of this white to kind of tone it down a little bit. Once you have your brush so that it's loaded with just a little hint of blue on a corner edge and then white across the whole rest of the brush, we're going to go ahead and start painting on the snow. So on the face, I'm going to keep that blue towards this outside edge here and I am going to pat that color on right along the outside edge and pick up more white as you need it. And we're going to just pat that color on and if you are painting along with us tonight, if you get a moment, go ahead and write that in the chat and so Dylan can kind of see if we've got some friends that are painting along with us. It would be always fun to know. We've also got a few comments. I know we don't usually broadcast, you know, these kind of paint nights on this format. So if you're a little new to it, you can find the supply list in the description of this live video and mm -hmm. that will take you to platonline.com where you'll find the, a picture of the project along with the supply list and the pattern that Chris just talked about, and you'll find everything on platonline.com. That's right. 
And what I'm doing now is I'm just going back over this little area that we put, so I'm light, putting more white on top of that blue. I just want that outside edge to be kind of like a very light, light area of blue, not a long, strong blue color. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the forehead of our little girlfriend, right up next to the hat. And if you have transferred your eyes or your nose, I just put a general outline on mine. That's quite all right. You can paint over it. You might still be able to see through it. There we go. So now we have our snow area on. The only part that I'm missing some snow is actually in the middle here. And I'm just going to very lightly brush on a little bit of white through the middle. So now I have my whole snowman's face, our snow lady's face, all painted. Now there's a couple other areas of, that are showing that are part of her body. And then we have a little bit of a shoulder area over here. So let's do the same thing here. Let's pick up a little bit more of that light blue. And that's going to go towards the outside of her body. And it's almost kind of like a little triangle wedge here of the little bit of her shoulder showing. And so we'll just fill that in with white and that little bit of that light blue. We have another little area over here on this side, and we'll do the same thing. Again, picking up a little bit of that blue on the outside of her shoulder, underneath her scarf, and then this part here is like the uh, tie of the scarf that's coming down. So we're gonna paint that blue right up next to that as well. And there's one other tiny little area, and you may have transferred it, you may have not. As this scarf kind of swings around here, there's one tiny, tiny little corner here that is still part of the snow. So we can squeeze our brush in here and make another little triangle shape right in there. So that's all we're going to do for our snow areas. So I'm going to go ahead and take a clean paper towel and wipe my brush of that. We'll let this set up and dry a little bit be before we start coming in and putting some of the details on. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and base coat the stocking part of our hat. And that would be this part right up here. That is all painted with another color where you need to add to our palette. And that is aqua. So if you're painting along with me, go ahead and get a little bit of aqua out. And we'll use this same brush. I didn't clean it, get, didn't get water in it, but I did blot out the excess blue and white here on my paper towel. And I'm going to load that brush nice and full like I did before with the white, both sides of the brush with just the aqua here on the brush. And there still might be a little bit of white residue here, but that's quite all right. And I'm just going to very quickly paint in, and this is why we're using a nice, big brush because this will cover these areas so much quicker, faster, easier, and with fewer brush strokes. So we're going to paint in our stocking hat. And again, this is all done with the color I'm using now is aqua. Use that chisel edge of the brush to kind of help you go along the rim of a hat as well as the outside edges of the hat. Now when you come to the very tail, the tip of the tail of the hat. As I said, I did not paint the little um, pom-pom here that's going to work be at the end of our hat. We'll paint that after we paint our background. So just come up to the tip. And I'm going to just kind of fill that in. And we are good to go on this. Now, while this is still a little bit wet, I am going to use this brush that's already loaded with our aqua base color. And I am going to side load a little bit into our blue. And again, that was true blue. And I'm going to blend on my palette so that it kind of softens that mix of the aqua plus the blue. And the blue is what I'm going to use to shade this hat. So we are going to, if you look here on the finished sample, I'll bring this in a little bit closer for you. We are going to put a little bit of blue on the aqua part of the hat. We're going to come in right along the corner here and then right across this whole rim. This little floppy part of the tail of the hat, there's a crease that's going to come up here. So we're going to shade down into this crease. So we're going to start here on this edge and then bring that blue right across the top of the rim and then up into that crease area. So I've got a brush, again, that's loaded with my aqua and a little bit of my blue. 
and let's go ahead and begin shading that and this aqua might still be our base color might still be a little wet and that's okay we're going to use this to our advantage to kind of blend those colors in wet on wet any questions yet dylan Nope, we don't have any questions. We've got a ton of people joining us. Oh, that's awesome. Again, if you guys are kind of new to this format, everything can be found in the description of this video. And just like all of our lives, this will be posted on our YouTube channel and you can find it in our Paint Night Live playlist. So they're all together and you can come back to this and get all the information. It'll drive you right to Plaid Online at any time. Thank you, Dylan. Sure. The other thing too I'd love to mention if you are finding us perhaps on YouTube and may, or maybe even through Plaid Crafts Facebook page, you may not be aware that we have a Learn to Paint Facebook community here at Plaid too and it's called Let's Paint with Plaid. So I invite each and every one of you to join us and learn to paint. We offer lots and lots of free uh, painting lessons there in Let's Paint with Plaid and again that's a Facebook group you can find us in. All right, now we, after we have shaded across this top part, uh, right up along the top of the rim there, on our little tail here, we're going to bring a little bit of that blue shading here underneath, maybe about halfway, maybe about where this rim meets the stocking cap part. We're going to, from here, uh, while we're on the aqua part, we're going to add the blue here and across this very bottom. So I still have my brush loaded with the aqua and the blue and I'm just going to pat some of that keeping that blue towards the outside edge there and there we go so this right now is where my hat is it is based in with the aqua and it's kind of shaded with our blue if you are painting along with me and you have that part done as well you can go ahead and pinch your brush to kind of clean it out we're going to reload the brush with the base color again, which is our aqua. We were pinching it to remove that dark blue. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up just a little bit of white on one corner and I am going to have a brush that's fully loaded with aqua, but one corner has just a little bit of the white. You can see I'm blending here on the palette so I'm making an even lighter color of aqua on one corner of the brush. I'm going to bring this up so you can see. We have aqua on all the whole width of the flat of the brush and then white just on one edge or one corner. And the white is going to be used as a highlight all along the top part of the hat here. So keeping the brush with the white side to the top or the outer edge of our hat, we're just going to start putting a little bit of highlight on the hat. And you'll notice when I am painting, I am using what we call a pat, pat, pat motion. I am taking that brush and I'm lightly stroking lots of little patty strokes. I'm not doing like one long pull or one long smooth stroke. If you try using that technique to paint, you'll notice that you'll get a nice smooth more blended look and it's really very pretty that way. The left, oh I'm sorry Dylan. Um, yeah. from Gail, this is perfect for our Minnesota weather. <laughs> I know Gail, somebody, and Dylan it's so funny, somebody that I know that um, one of our Let's Paint followers that lives in um, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. she wrote me today too and said that she was going to attend and she said oh, this perfect. was very apropos for her weather too because they're having tons of snow mm -hmm. today. You planned in advance for yeah, it. Yeah, right. We aim to please, right Dylan? Mm -hmm. All right, so going um, back to my hat here, and thank you for sharing that, Dylan. Sure. We have our hat based in with the aqua. We loaded our brush with the aqua plus our true blue, and we added the blue to the hat. Then we cleaned the brush out, and then we loaded it again with our, our um, base color, which again is the aqua, added the white, and we added some highlights. So that's all I'm going to do to that part of the hat. So now I am going to have... Uh, my brush in water and I'm going to clean both the aqua and the white and the blue and whatever residue there might be left in that brush and I'm just going to pinch that clean and nice and dry. 
And what I want to do now is get just white. So I want to make sure that that brush is nice and clean. What we're going to do here on the rim of our stocking cap is paint the whole thing in real quick with white. Now if you have uh, patterned your straight lines like I did on mine here, we can paint over them and you'll still see just a little bit of white showing through. So right now for quickly, I'm just going to put a real quick touch of white on this whole rim of the stocking cap. I'm not trying to paint in the stripes, I'm just painting from left to right and right to left, just one big wide band. And as you are picking up the white from your palette, if by chance you get a little blue in it because we worked with blue, or maybe you might get a little aqua in it because we've worked with aqua, that will be A-OK. -okay. So we just now have that rim based in with white. And I'm going to set this brush down because what we're going to do now is we're going to get our lavender color out here. And that is Folk Art Matte Lavender. So go ahead and add that onto your palette too. And the lavender is what we're going to use to paint our stripes. There we go. And we might want to shift, shift down to a smaller brush, like maybe a number 12 flat brush for this. And I'm going to fill that brush good and full, stroking in both sides of the flat brush into that little puddle of lavender. Is everyone with me? I hope so. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on and we're going to just paint in these vertical stripes. Now as you look at mine here and think about the curve of your snow lady's hat and or her head underneath her hat there, you don't want to have just a straight pull down stroke. You don't want straight stripes. They need to kind of flow and curve with the shape of the hat. So the ones that are here are towards the outside, they should be more like a parenthesis, kind of flowing around that circle. And then still have some curvature, slight curvature, as you get more towards the center of the hat. So what I'm doing now with that number 12 flat brush loaded with my lavender, I am just going to go ahead and paint down these vertical stripes that we're adding onto her hat. And one quick trip too is always to use the chisel edge of that brush if it helps. If you don't want to make a solid stripe, you could come like this sideways and then paint across. It, I want you to work at your comfort level so you can either paint a straight um, little stripe down or like I said, you could use the chisel edge of the brush and kind of create a little bit of a straight line for yourself and then fill it in. But what we're doing now is going ahead through the whole width here of our rim of our hat is painting in the lavender stripes. Now you could leave this very plain and simple if you want. You do not have to add all the detail that I put on mine. Sometimes I think the detail is what makes something, especially when you're painting uh, kind of a more whimsical look. If you're painting kind of cutesy and whimsical, sometimes the more detail you put in, the better, I think. Now you'll notice our white that we kind of put on here first is not completely dry, and it's given us kind of a little white <coughs> plus lavender effect as we're painting our stripes, and that's perfect because we're going to come back and give a little detail on top of the stripe, and it's all right to have that little bit of a mottled effect underneath our little uh, design that we're going to paint next. When you're working with these folk art acrylics that are so rich and creamy in consistency, I think they're just beautiful color palette that we're working with tonight. And they blend so well, they glide on so well. Uh, even when your canvas is kind of textured, my little canvas panel here is, <coughs> excuse me, a lot more textured than the stretched canvas that I painted my sample on, but these acrylics just simply glide over all that texture and it really is beautiful. Okay, how are y'all coming? If by chance 
you did not get like a nice smooth straight edge on either side of your stripes, don't worry about it because the finished, I'll hold my finished one up again so you can see more detail. The finished one is going to have a lot of black line work on here and that will help clean up your edges too. So if you are at this point where you're not really liking your stripes, hang on. I got, I got a, a way we're going to make them look absolutely fantastic. All right, I'm cleaning my brush out and I'm going to set that aside for a moment. <clears throat> I'm going back to my three quarter inch flat brush that still has white in it <clears throat> and I'm going to paint in the scarf area of white now. Just a real quick, with that large flat brush, we're just going to stroke in, kind of like we did <clears throat> the rim there of her hat, we're just going to put in a very light coat or application of white all across the area where her neck scarf is. So don't worry about trying to blend, shade, or highlight. We're just putting the white on as a base color. And you want to do all the way around her neck on both sides here of the scarf, as well as that little bit of a fold of her tail here in the center. And that is very quickly applied. Now you'll notice we've done a lot of basing in white so far between the white of the snowman's face and her body as well as the rim of her hat and her scarf. Now if we had gone and painted the whole thing white all at one time, it might have been a little confusing, especially if you're a beginner painter. I love to teach beginners and it might have been a little confusing to determine which area is which, so that's why I broke it down and we're only working in sections. All right, now we're going to just go ahead and put this brush down. I'm going to set it in my water for a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. And now I'm going back to a small brush. And I didn't put this one on the supply list. You could use your number 12, but you might want to drop down to even maybe a number 6 flat. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the pattern that's on the lavender stripes. So as I hold mine up close, you can see that they're just kind of like little um, touch down and pull marks and we're going to pull almost like a little fern we're going to pull towards the center and we're going to pull in one direction so I'm going to draw something here for you if my marker will work there we go okay so here's our stripe this is all lavender right now and what we're going to do is we're going to think just pretend I'm not doing this that we're going to paint this but just pretend that here's the middle of our stripe okay those are little dotted lines. We're going to take a little flat brush and we're going to have the angle out this way and we're going to touch down and then we're going to pull to the middle. Then we're going to have an angle brush this, or the angle of the flat brush this way and we're going to pull to the middle. So we're pulling in little strokes diagonally down. Let me show you again so you can see here. So can you see I've got a flat brush up in that corner and I'm just stroking as if they're, I'm stroking towards the middle of each stripe. And what we're going to do is we're going to load our brush with the white first. So depending upon how big of a pattern you want on here, it almost kind of gives you the effect as though there's a knitted design there, uh, a knitted pattern. So we're going to start with white and then we're going to touch in a little bit to our lavender and we're going to make a little bit of a lighter lavender on the side here. So we've got the white and a little bit of lavender and a smaller flat brush. I jumped down to a number six and as I was saying a minute ago, depending upon the size of the little strokes that you want here or the size of the knit that you want on your design will determine the width of the brush. So I'm going to start here. I'll do it on this one right here so you can see. I'm going to touch here in this corner and pull and lift. Touch in this corner, pull and lift. And it's just very quickly done all the way down. There you go. There's one done. Very, very simple. So I want you all to do that too. It's a smaller flat brush loaded with white, then loaded with our lavender to create a lighter lavender. And then we're just going to stroke. And if it's easier for you to do like one side of the little um, stripe first, like I just did the left side all the way down. Now I can come back and do the right side. 
You can reload your brush every so often. You don't probably have to load it for every single stroke. And once you kind of get the hang of this, I'm just touching down and I'm pulling. But while I'm pulling, I'm also kind of lifting up real quick. And it's given us kind of like, um, what do they call that? I think they call it a garter stitch when you're knitting. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of gives you a little bit of that knit. And probably Specialty. some of our friends are knitters out there. They yep. might We have come a lot in. of people connecting the two there, kind of making it look like a, like a little knit. chain knit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So this, none of this is difficult. Um, when you look at the whole overall design, there's a lot of detail. So sometimes detail is intimidating to some folks and they look at it and they think, oh, I can't paint that. But you know what? Like everything else, when you break it down just a little section at a time, it's very, very easy to do. Could you hold that up again just so everybody kind of sees? Yeah. I zoomed in a little bit too. There we go. Perfect. All right. Let's move on to our face, because my face is dry. I didn't uh, use a hair dryer because we've been moving around to different parts here, and my face is dry now. I love when I'm painting things that have faces to paint the faces first, because I always feel like I have a friend in the studio with me. Um, but we moved, after we started that, we moved on just because I wanted this part to be completely dry. Let's add these gorgeous rosy pink cheeks next. So you're going to need to add another color to your palette, and that color is bright pink. You're going to need just a little bit of bright pink. So it, isn't that such a beautiful color? It is so bright and vibrant. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that large three-quarter inch brush that we've been using for a lot of our base coloring, and I want to clean out all the paint that I have in it, and I'm also going to make sure I really blot it well on a paper towel here, make sure it's really pretty much dry. Now when we're going to do our cheeks, we are not going to do the type of cheek when you see an eye. Sometimes you see cheeks that kind of look like rainbows, or you even see them where people put in a full circle. We're not doing this, but we are kind of giving it a full circle look, but it's very delicate and sweet. So to achieve that, we are going to, with our flat brush, and this is the large three quarter inch flat brush I'm working with, I'm going to put just a little bit of pink on one corner of that flat brush. There's not a lot of paint. It's not all the way across the whole flat of the brush. It's just on one corner. And what I'm going to do, if this is still my eye here, and our cheeks, of course, are underneath the eyes and in the middle of this face here, if you have penciled in or uh, patterned in where your nose is like I did, I can still see my nose and my eyes even though I've got white paint on here. We're still going to put the cheek on here on the right side of our snow lady's face. Her, her nose is going to go up over the cheek, but we're still going to put the cheek on as if the nose isn't there yet. We'll layer and put the nose on top, so don't try and work around that. Here it is up close if you want to see the finished one. So I've got my brush. I've got it loaded with the pink. And what I'm going to do is think about the middle of the cheek area. And I'm going to put the side of the brush that has the pink in it towards the middle of the area. And I am going to pat around, change the shape of my brush, the direction of my brush. I'm going to pat around. And because the paint is only on one side of the brush and that's towards the center of our cheek, it's going to be automatically softened, really beautiful, towards the outside edge. So let's go ahead and do this on my finished piece here. And I'll start maybe here, if you're a little nervous about this, start on the side that has the carrot nose coming up over it because then you can kind of work with that and soften that out. So I'm starting out kind of trying to make a circle, but I'm keeping that darker pink color. Let me raise it up for you. I'm keeping the darker pink color towards the center. I have one, more than one half of my brush that has no paint in it, and that I'm using to kind of pull that color out and we're really kind of softening that cheek. So I want you to go ahead and work on both of your cheeks now and just soften them out. If it's not moving for you, uh, you could add a little tiny, tiny bit of moisture to your brush, but don't do a lot. 
you really just kind of want to use the brush to kind of move that dry paint out and around. Now my, my nose is coming up over here, so I'm kind of liking where that cheek is. And now I'm going to move on to this cheek. And this cheek, again, it's going to be underneath the eye. I'm kind of starting out like a circle, kind of blending that color around in a fashion of sorts. And then I'm going to start really working some of that color out and softening it. She's been out in the snow with her boyfriend, Frosty, so she... She's it's, got some color. She's got some color. And I love this very, very hot pink color. So pretty for a snow lady's cheeks. Just play with it until you get where you like it. I just dipped mine in a little bit of water and moving it a little bit. I don't want to do it too much because I'm getting a little bit further out than I want. Oh, she's looking pretty. I hope y'all's are looking pretty too. For those of you that are painting along with us tonight, I would love to see your work. And as we mentioned, we have a painting group uh, on Facebook that's called Let's Paint with Plaid. You're welcome to take a picture of your snow lady tonight, your Frosty's girlfriend, and add her to our group. And you, if you do, be sure to use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge because we all love to see your work. All right, now we've got our cheeks on. While we still have the hot pink out, let's go ahead and put in the rough shape of what's going to be our little rose here that's on her hat. So I just want to go ahead and take that same three-quarter inch flat brush with some hot pink on it and in this area here and I did you don't have to worry about putting a pattern on just kind of base in a rough shape of however big a, a rose you want now what I did there is a little bit bigger than what I did here but I don't have any problem with that she's just going to have a bigger rose and this color as pretty as it is is also a kind of a transparent color so we're going to let this set up, and if, yours is, if you still see a lot of your stripes showing through, we'll wait and we'll give it another coat. In the meantime, though, oh, let's go back and finish some more of our face, and then we can work on her scarf. <clears throat> so I'm just cleaning out that three-quarter inch flat brush. Let's scoot down to a smaller brush, and let's add another color to our palette, and that is going to be your black, and that is licorice. If you don't have that, you could use pure black. And we're going to paint in her eyes. Her eyes are simply oval shapes. And then we're going to also paint in the little rocks or the um, pebbles maybe even that could be her smile line there. And so to paint the um, ovals of her eyes, go ahead and just use a flat brush that feels comfortable to you in size. Could be the number six. It could be uh, a number 10. You could even drop down if you're not too comfortable to a smaller brush, but I just want you to paint in a solid oval of the black, your licorice color. Be sure always to turn your work if it's easier for you to pull towards you, pull away from you. And one quick trick when you are ever painting eyes, once you have both of them painted, if one oval or whatever shape eye you're painting, tonight we're painting ovals, if one oval looks off and you can't figure out what's wrong with it, it just looks awkward, you're not sure why, you're not happy with the pair of your eyes, you always want to do one of these three things. Take a picture, using your cell phone, take a picture of your piece and look through the camera lens, look at the picture. A lot of times you can definitely see what is off through the pho photograph. If you don't have a cell phone and have access to that, take your piece and go to the bathroom, flip it around in front of you and look at it in reverse through the mirror on, on the bathroom wall. That's another way to kind of tell. And the last trick I can give you is to take your piece and hold it upside down. And you, in either one of those three ways, you could always tell when one eye is maybe longer than another, wider than another, 
maybe uh, maybe you have a jagged point maybe it's not nice and smooth and rounded on the edges so that's a good way to always tell when the eyes look off all right I'm going to move on now let's see my eyes I'm gonna let these black set up a little bit let's go ahead and put our nose in I want to do more to oh I tell you what while we're working with black let's go ahead and put the petals in so using that same brush I'm going to bring this up so you can see it close. My pebbles or rocks are very um, uneven. They're very rocky. They're not smooth. So you can put in whatever kind of mouth you want. I like putting the little rocks in because I think that makes it just so much easier. And you can use that little flat brush and you're just going to kind of use a corner of that brush and kind of dab in until you get the shape that you like. I usually start in the center of my smile where I did right here underneath the nose in the middle of the face and then I kind of work gradually out this one being the larger and then it gradually descends in size and gets a little bit smaller as they go up into our cheeks and you can put as many rocks or pebbles on your face to create your smile as you want I did a total of one two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven little rocks on my painted sample. I don't always put the same amount on every single time I paint a snow lady or a snowman, but that's what this one is. I think I'll put one more little one here on this side. Maybe one more tiny little one there. There we go. My eyes are dry, so let's do our eyes before we do our nose. So I'm going to go back to a uh, larger flat brush. I am going to use that um, number 6 and or maybe a number 10. I'm going to load it with some of our base color of the eyes, which was our licorice. And then I'm going to side load into our aqua. And I'm going to blend on that palette. We're going to use some aqua in our black eyes. And I want a brush, a flat brush that has aqua on one corner and it's black across the whole rest of the brush. So uh, let's see, here we go. There you go. You can see that that brush has black and aqua on it. And as I raise this up, I'm going to show you, can you see a little bit of an aqua, kind of like a U shape at the bottom of our ovals? but not completely at the bottom. We have a little rim of black showing through. So with this brush that has the aqua in it, on that eye shape, we just have an oval. And what I'm going to do with the side of the brush that has the aqua on it, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do just a little sweeping little um, upside down rainbow or a U shape, but I'm not going to come completely down to the end of the oval. So let me show you one more time. Look really closely there. There's a little bit of a gap. So it's kind of like adding a little bit of frosting on the eyes. So I'm going to again add that aqua and I'm just lightly patting that color on so that it goes all the way across and I'm, I'm stroking mine from the left to the right because I'm right-handed. And that's what I find is easier. And I'm going to bring one up. I did this eye right here on this side. I'm bringing it up really close so you can see really well. We're going to do the same thing on the other eye. And I'm going to still stroke from the left side of the eye to the right. Now, once I have that in as a base, I'm now going to, again, with the black still in my brush, the aqua still in my brush, I'm going to pick up just a little tiny bit of white on the aqua side of the brush. So we have our aqua, and we have a little bit of white, so we're going to lighten uh, white to lighten that aqua a little bit. And we're just going to retrace those steps. So we're putting a little bit more of maybe an aqua frosting on the eyes here. And remember, you're not going all the way down to the complete oval. You're going to keep a little bit of a black rim. Let me show you really close. 
All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a liner brush. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean that brush out. And with my liner brush, I'm going to take a little bit of black off to the side with some water that's in the brush. I took a moment and I dipped my brush into the water. I want to thin down some of this black. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the pupil <clears throat> inside the eye. And that pupil is kind of like an asterisk. <clears throat> if you think about making a plus sign and then crossing the railroad tracks in the middle, kind of like an asterisk like that. And we're going to do that, not as large as that, but we're going to do that in the center of the eye. And then sometimes I do even go back and add a couple more. And that is going to be our pupil inside the eye. So I'm going to show you this one up really close. Can you see that little bit of a, almost looks like a black spider, if you will. So we're going to start with that asterisk <coughs> inside the eyes. We'll make sure that's dry. That's dry. And I'm using just the tip of this liner brush. You'll notice my, if you're watching me, my brush is straight up and down. And I just made several little lines inside that. So I'm just putting a little bit of a uh, pupil here inside our eye. Very simply done, very whimsy. I'm gonna clean the black out of my brush and then load my brush with some white. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some highlights in this eye and the highlights, I have two in each eye and they're in the same spot of each eye and so I have one highlight up at the top of the eye. Think of this as a face of a clock at like one o'clock. I'm going to touch down and then pull a little bit and lift real quick. So I'm going to, let's see if I can bring this up for you. I'm going to touch down, pull and lift. And we're going to get a pretty good size highlight at like maybe one o'clock. And then diagonally down across from that at like maybe seven o'clock, we're just going to touch. So it's a smaller highlight. So we have a big highlight at the top and a smaller highlight at the bottom. And I'm gonna do the same thing again over here at one o'clock and seven o'clock. You don't ever wanna reverse them, which would be 11 o'clock and five o'clock because then that your eyes are gonna look cross-eyed. So we're just gonna put a little bit of a highlight there and a tiny little one there. And your eyes are starting to come to life, aren't they? All right. Any questions about eyes so far, Dylan? No, nope, no questions. But okay. We've got a good steady viewership, so I know everybody's watching intently. Oh, good, mm -hmm. good. Well, thank you, everybody. All right, let's add our little eyelashes, and I'm going to bring mine up again real quick. I only put two strokes of eyelashes on each eye. I do, I caution you to put more than that because then at some point, if you're not careful, they kind of look like spiders. And our eyelashes, I always start, if this was my eye shape, I always start a little bit inside the eye, especially since it's so dark here at that top of the eye, and you're going to stroke outwards. You don't ever want to stroke your eyelashes inwards. So you're going to start inside and just stroke outside. It's a very, um, not straight stick, it's very soft and fluid. And like I said, the, you're beginning your stroke on the eye and you're pulling out a little bit. So there's two little eyelashes on either eye, or one eye, and then do the same thing on the other eye. Very soft, very simple. And if it helps, you can, you can pull this way for this one, or you can always, another trick is to turn it upside down and pull out from this way upside down because sometimes that helps people, especially beginners who might be a little afraid to try and get your eyelashes to match. And if you are a real be beginner, you could even put the pattern back on top and transfer those pattern lines if that makes it easier for you. All right, now we're going to add our pure orange to our palette because we're gonna get to slide on a nose so I'm adding some pure orange, and I'm going to use the uh, number 10, I think. Yep, let's use the number 10 flat brush. Number 10 or number 12? I think I'll switch to the 12. 
All right, so I'm going to load my brush good and full like we've been doing both sides of the flat brush with our orange color. And when we look at this carrot nose, obviously it's not a straight stick. It kind of has a curve going up her face. It's wider here where it touches her face. And the tip of the carrot is skinnier out here. So to create that, we're going to start here at the widest part. And I'm going to just touch down the chisel edge of my brush that's good and full of the orange paint. And I'm just going to slide. I'm just sliding. Can you see how easy that is? I was just kind of zigzagging or had that brush down, but I was sliding that brush. So that's what I want you to do because we don't want it completely solid in. Look how raggedy and jaggedy my carrot is. So we don't want a nice smooth carrot. We want it kind of wiggly uh, going up her nose here. If you need to stop and reload your brush, you can. And as you start getting further away from the base of the carrot, where you want to start thinning it down, just start working more towards the chisel edge. And your carrot nose can have some wiggles, some bumps. It can cut, on this side, we'll cover up some of your cheek that you put in but it's really fun to kind of give it a little bit of an edge. All right, now we're going to move on. That's all I'm going to do to the carrot. We're not going to shade it. We're not going to highlight it. There is some black detailing, but we'll come to that later. Let's quickly give our little rose another coat of our pink paint, and then let's move on down to our plaid of our neck scarf. So to do the plaid on the neck scarf, I think we have all the colors that we do. So if you want to put a plaid on here, you, or if you want to just paint polka dots, whatever you want to do, if you want to leave it a solid color, uh, you can do your own thing. But what I did on mine was I painted a, uh, I'm going to use my number 10 flat brush here. I painted first the aqua stripes, and they are both vertical as well as horizontal on the scarf. So we're going to load that brush with our aqua. And this is a number 10 flat that I'm working with. And you'll notice too, um, as I bring this back into so you can see it, each of the pattern stripes here that make our plaid, they're not, nothing is a straight stick tonight. They're not straight soldiers. There is some movement and they kind of flow with the shape of the scarf. So we are going to begin, and it doesn't matter how many you put in, just begin kind of starting, you can see here we have a little curl here on the outside edge. We're going to put in a plaid line, the beginning of a plaid for our scarf. And I'm just painting this in solid with our aqua. I'm using a number 10 flat brush. And remember, kind of like we did uh, the talk about the eyes, uh, and, and what we did up here also, the stripes on our um, brim of the hat, they're not straight on the edges. You want them to kind of flow almost like parentheses. So if it helps you to do these outside edges first, do those first to kind of get some movement and some flowing to get that direction. Um, I'm going to change my direction here a little bit as I'm close moving to the center of my scarf. And I am just painting in all of my vertical stripes right now. Now remember, there's a little part of her um, scarf that is like folded over in the front. So let's go ahead and do that too as well. And I only put two. And they are kind of painted kind of like we were talking about the parentheses. I have one um, to the right and one to the left. All right, let's go ahead and now put our vertical stripes in. So when I did mine, I have t actually two of the aqua stripes through here. If you want to only add one, that's okay too. So a good way to do those is to start at the end and go right to that point. Then pick up and go to the next point. Don't feel like you have to make that solid stripe all the way across. You can use these vertical bars now as a starting and stopping point 
to paint in the rest of your plaid. It makes it so much easier. Remember to stop where that little um, fold over tail is. And then I'm going to pick back up on the other side and come all the way over here. And then I'll repeat that same process again. Remember, you can stop and start. Use these vertical bars as a pattern for you, making it easy so you don't have to make one long, smooth stroke. And stop that again. And one more over here. It's already starting to come together, isn't it? Now on this little folded over part, you'll do some horizontal lines there too, but I tend not to match up to what I already have there. So I'm going to go off kilter a little bit and bring one more in here and maybe a little tiny bit of one down there. All right, now I'm going to clean that brush out and we will use our liner brush for the rest of the stripes that are going to create our plaid. So with my liner brush, and I'm going to load it up first, um, let's go with our, yeah, it was the lavender next. I'm looking to see with the lines underneath. Let's go to our lavender. I am bringing some water to the puddle, and I am thinning that down a little bit so that it will flow from our brush. We want our paint a little bit more fluid. So I'm bringing water to the lavender, and I'm really mixing that up really well. I want it to flow from my liner brush. And the lavender uh, little stripes I put, as you're looking at the pattern here, I put every single lavender stripe to the left of our aqua stripes. So everywhere where you have an aqua stripe, give a little space from the white, let a little bit of white show through, in other words, and then paint an aqua stripe. I'm, I'm paint a lavender stripe. Plaids can be very, very detailed or they can be very simply done. It's kind of a matter of personal preference how much you want to add on to yours. And on this one here, same thing, all to the left. And that's it for all the vertical ones. When you do the horizontal ones, the lavender little liner brush stroke is to the top of our aqua that we've already painted. And if it helps, you can do one long line or you can stop and start here just like we did with the aqua. Do that with the lavender. So these little crossbars kind of help you so that you don't feel like you have to go all the way the distance. If you're not comfortable with liner work, that's a good, good way for beginners to get used to working with a liner. Little, little baby steps, if you will. And on our little tie here, the little tail, we're going again above the aqua stripes with our lavender. All right. Now, one more thing I added to here color-wise to co coordinate with everything is we're going to add in the blue. So liner brush and our blue. This was, again, true blue. If you don't have that, cobalt hue would work well. Uh, even look at me blue would be a pretty blue in this color, in this pattern. And the blue is done actually right on top of the aqua. So right in the center of the aqua, we're going to add the blue stripe. So we're just retracing all of the blue. If you are painting along with us, I cannot tell you how excited I am to be able to see your Frosty's girlfriend. And by chance, if you are posting her in our group, Let's Paint with Plaid, be sure and tell me who Frosty's girlfriend's name is. <laughs> It'll be an entire dating pool. Frosty yeah. will have a lot of different options <laughs> tomorrow. And I am carrying that same blue stripe in the middle of the aqua, vertically as well as horizontally. 
Now we're going to let all of this dry before we do any shading or highlighting on that. So let's move real quickly over here to our um, little flower and we're going to add some thicket to our palette for the green leaves. And I'm going to not worry about a pattern. I'm just going to paint a leaf on there. I'm going to use um, my number 12 flat brush, load it up with our thicket. And I have three leaves uh, surrounding my little um, rose on her hat here. And I just kind of went from the rose shape out and out and kind of painted like a little bit of a leaf. And I'm going to add a little bit of blue to mine to give it a little bit more coverage. The thicket was looking a little pale. And I'm going to do the same thing here, out and out. And one more leaf and that is towards the bottom here. And this one can actually come out onto her face if you want. And I am using a little bit of our blue on what is the darker side of the leaf, just to kind of give it a little bit more hide. And then I'm going to remove the paint from my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of aqua on one corner of the brush and we'll come back and we'll highlight the opposite side of the leaf. Again, we're kind of working wet on wet with our aqua. So the leaves were thicket and then I wanted to put a little bit more height on mine so I added some blue on the dark side of my leaf. And then I removed the paint from my brush. I added the aqua and I added the aqua frosting on the light side of the leaf. So there's a dark side of the leaf and a light side of the leaf. And now I'm going to clean that brush out in my brush basin. Dry that brush really well. We're going to use this brush to work on our little folk art rose here. The little rose is basically this hot pink misshapen circle that we've already painted here. And we are going to shade the bottom side of this pink here and we're going to shade like a little well inside our rose there. And that shading color is going to be done with our blue. So let's first load our brush with our base color, our local color, which is the hot pink. I'm going to tip a corner of it into our true blue I'm blending on the palette here. That blue starts looking a little bit purple when it's married up with our pretty, pretty pink. And I am just going to take that same brush and kind of pat, pat, pat. Very rough, not a lot of detail, just patting to shade the bottom of the rose. Wendy reminded us that in the movies, uh, her name is Crystal. Oh! Mm -hmm. I kind of forgot about that bit. Yeah, I think they well, use thank that you, Wendy. in a few different ones. Mm -hmm. Well, for those of you that are painting Crystal tonight, she's all dolled up with a little rose on her cap. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to put, and thank you for that, Wendy. I did not know that. We're going to also add that little bit of a well inside her rose here. Clean out my brush. And I'm going to load my brush one more time with that base color, my local color. Again, it's that bright, bright pink, hot pink color. And I'm going to tip a corner of that into my white. So I want white and I want a highlight of my pink. And with that brush, I'm now going to just kind of highlight around this little circle here. So I'm just kind of putting a little bit of a blush here, if you will, or a highlight on our rose. I want to pick up a little bit more pink. And just kind of pat that on. We're highlighting around that center. And that's all we're going to do to this rose. I'm not stroking out petals. I'm not doing anything fancy. 
We're keeping it very simple, very beginner level. All right, let's move on real quick now. Let's get those big brushes out. We're going to get our three quarter inch flat brush and we're going to start just putting color on on the outside edge. This is a very, very mottled outside edge. We're still letting this dry before we come back and shade this. We want all those stripes to be dry before we go on. So let's put this background color in very quickly. You'll see that there is aqua. There's the blue, the true blue. There's some lavender in here. I've used some white to kind of highlight some of those colors. Just play with it. You're going to take that large flat brush. I'll, I'll start out maybe with some white in my brush, maybe a little bit of my aqua. And I'm just going to start playing and putting color on. And then as I move around, I can pick up some more color. And I'm going to let that purple then kind of blend into the um, background color there. I might pick up a little bit of blue because the purple will blend into some blue. And just keep playing with those colors. Very soft, you can see here between the blue and the purple, very softly kind of blending them. I might add a little bit more aqua where I started it up there at the top. And I don't take the time to clean the brush between each of these little color uh, changes, if you will. And I'm just adding some purple now here on this side. I'm just kind of going to continue around the whole canvas, filling in this background color and just allowing these three colors or four, if you want to count the white, to kind of lightly blend. And I'm going up very carefully when I move up towards the hat. And no two backgrounds are ever going to look the same because you're just constantly picking up another color and softly blending it in. I'm, as you do this, you'll notice I'm moving my brush around quite a bit too. I'm going from the right to the left. I'm flipping it and flopping it. Each of my brush strokes are different. They're never the same. I'm picking up a little white every now and then to kind of lighten the background. Just kind of play and create a mottled background between the lavender, the aqua, and your blue, and use a little white every now and then. And when you're going up next to your snow lady, Crystal, uh, you want to be very careful. Use your chisel edge to kind of really get control around her face, around her hat and her scarf. Every so once in a while, you can even kind of squeeze some of that excess paint out of your paintbrush. I do like to see brush strokes when I'm doing this kind of a background. So allow there to be some color changes and some brush strokes. Any questions about this? No, we just have everybody watching. Okay. For those of you that are in snow country, um, I know you're probably going to have snow for a while, aren't you? It's just the beginning. <laughs> you never know. We, we start to get it March, April sometimes. So. Here in Atlanta, Georgia, where we're located, we tend to get more ice storms then we get snow and when they when it happens here everyone just panics there's not a loaf of bread or a can of tomato Campbell's tomato soup mm -hmm. on the counters and in the grocery stores This is very similar to a technique that I often teach that's called slip slap, but this is a little bit different. We're just playing with the color and we're making it any which way you like. 
I'm almost done with mine. It's almost a tie-dye look. Yeah, mm -hmm. very much, Dylan. That's a good comparison. Thank you for thinking about that. And this course can be done with any color combination. I would just warn you if you want to play and experiment with this on other projects, just try not to uh, use too many colors. Kind of stick with a unified color family. In other words, you don't want to have 10 or 12 colors out here all at one time. Going right up close to our body here. So I'm using the chisel edge of my brush. And one more little corner here. You can always come back and add a little bit of white frosting here and there, blend it in. And I'm thinking of the stripes on my scarf are about ready for the next step. So I'm going to stop this. I basically have color all the way around. I think I'll put a little aqua in this corner here. And you'll notice that this does not look anywhere like this one because the color combination and where the colors modeled together are completely different between the two. But it's still going to look nice. Let's put some uh, trim on our hat first and then we'll do the shading on our scarf and the last thing we'll do is our line work and we're almost there y'all. So let's talk about the little um, tassel here. I'll bring it up real close. This is all done with the liner and you can pick and choose what colors you want to make your tassel. I used um, the lavender, the aqua and the blue. Imagine that. <laughs> Those are the same colors we were just using. So I'm going to put a little bit of our lavender on and what I did was I let's let's do yeah let's I'm gonna pick up a little bit of blue with the lavender just to deepen it a little bit when we start the tassel there's a like three little stripes across here these are like horizontal to our tail coming down we're just gonna widen it a little bit first so I just put a little bit of lavender with my blue to make a darker stroke across here all right then from there is where we're going to make the ponytail part of our pom-pom. Keep in mind, think about parentheses. They're going to flow here on the outside, flow on the outside, and just continue kind of flowing down. So I'm going to start first. So it doesn't hold. There we go. And I'm using um, very fluid paint in my brush. I'm using my brush straight up and down to my surface. And I'm very, with light pressure, just starting to make some like strands of yarn and you'll do that with each of the colors that you want to use for your pom-pom so that was right now a little bit more of the blue I'll switch and put a little bit more of the, our, our lavender in here now and I'll come back and add some aqua and maybe even a little bit of the white with the aqua next and that's what colors I used on my pom-pom if you'd rather highlight more with the pinks, you can. But I was kind of coordinating with our scarf here. And I'm going to add just a little bit of white with my aqua. Again, I'm using some water to kind of make it more of a fluid consistency and do a lighter aqua. And I just kind of layered these colors here on top. And then I'm going to take the white. And for those little horizontal stripe bars that we have here, right here, I just added like the four or three, I think it's three, little stripes across. One, two, three. And then the rest is going to be our trim in the black. If you want to add white polka dots here on the top, you can. And the white polka dots can be painted with your liner brush, actually painting a circle and filling it in. Or if you want, you could use the handle end of your paintbrush dip into the white paint, touch down, and rather than just completely lift back up again, actually make a little bit of a circle, draw a little circle while you have your brush down. So you can add little white polka dots on her hat if you want to. You understand how to do that, so I don't have to keep, keep putting white dots on mine. I'm going to move down now to show you 
how we are going to shade on our scarf. Before you shade yours, you need to make sure that all of your plaid lines are dry. You don't want to blur them, in other words. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of water in this th large three-quarter inch flat brush. And I am going to bring some of my blue over here. And I am going to kind of create a very fluid blue. I'm going to kind of float this color on. And I'm doing this so that the blue is only on the corner edge of my flat brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the shape of our scarf. And if you don't want to do this with the blue, you could do it with the lavender. You could do it with a blue and a lavender in your brush. And I'm just kind of floating some of that blue along the bottom of the scarf, around that tail part that's hanging forward. So this kind of sets the neck part of the scarf behind it. And we'll also go right up underneath her chin with this blue. And if this is too much blue, and like you said, you want to bring a little bit of lavender in there, you could even float some lavender now even on top of the blue. Don't forget the outside edges. And all of this is going to kind of help set back that plaid. And it's also going to make this little folded piece here on the front, the tail of the scarf, come forward. So that's how we shaded that. Now let's see, uh, the black line work. That's the next and final step that we're going to do here. And I'm going to use my liner brush. I'm bringing water over to my puddle of the black paint, really thinning it down. Again, we want fluid consistency paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do th all the line work around everything. It's very loose and it's very wiggly. Um, the line work is around, let's start at the top. Let's go ahead and go around the hat. So I'm going to start here on the outside edge of the top of the hat. And I'm just kind of wiggling it along. I am not worried about trying to make a very straight line. There's a wiggly line there for you. And this black trim is really what's going to make your frosty kind of come to life. I'm going around these three little things. And I'm even going to put a few little black lines inside our pom-pom. Not many, but a few. Then I'll bring it back up around our little knot there and around the top of the hat. We're going to go across the top of the rim of our hat. We're going to outline each of our leaves, top and bottom. And I'm going to pull a vein in the middle of the leaf. If you are a very, very basic, basic beginner and you're not quite sure about liner brush work like this, you could even use, I'll let you cheat, <laughs> you can use a <clears throat> black Sharpie marker if you'd like. But the liner brush is something to really understand, begin to practice, and learn control of it. I also just outlined my rose, and the rose is very whimsy. It's very wiggly on the outside edge. You do not want to worry about trying to make everything perfect with straight lines right now. We're going to align the cuff and each of our lavender stripes. All of this is done with our black. The black has been thinned with water. I'm using the liner brush straight up and down allowing the paint to just simply kind of flow from that liner brush. And as you start putting this on yours, are you all noticing how she's like really coming to life? This black is such a great accent and is so nice because you don't have to worry about the smooth lines. Let her be a little wiggly. She's a piece of folk art. She is a piece of whimsy. 
And when you do the line work around her face, that long kind of like U shape from like maybe uh, ear to ear or hat to hat all the way around her chin, let it wiggle. Don't worry about trying to make that long, smooth line. You'll actually like it better if you give her a little more character. You're going to outline around the scarf. There's a couple folds in the scarf that you can bring in from the outside edge. Don't forget her shoulders that are on both sides of the painting. And once you've outlined all of that, that is the last step to Frosty's little girlfriend. So I'll show you my finished one up front. And then I'll show you the one that I painted tonight. And no two are ever going to be alike. But there's my second one for tonight. Now I will tell you, I put on the supply list, and if you purchased yours or got yours out from your um, stash, Folk Art Extreme Glitter is a fantastic product. It is the very first glitter paint that was ever out on the market. And what this is, is this is under the Folk Art brand. I'll bring the label up real close so you can see. Folk Art Extreme Glitter. This is the hologram that I suggested we use tonight. This hologram is a, um, is a holographic glitter, but it is a very fine, sugar fine glitter that's mixed in with our paint. And when you use the holographic glitter, if you're not familiar with it, um, I'm going to use, I already have some on my Snow Lady now, but I'll put a little more on her because um, I don't want to, I want to make sure that's completely dry. Make sure your snow is completely dry. Make sure you have a really nice, clean, large brush. I'm going to use my three-quarter inch flat brush. And this holographic uh, extreme glitter looks like white paint right now. But it really is, and I don't know if I can show you up close. Uh, you can see a little bit of the glitter in there on the brush bristles. There is a very, very, like I said, sugar fine glitter in here. And I applied this over her whole face, even the black of her eyes. I did not do her carrot just to have some contrast, but I applied this on her face, across her cheeks, across the little um, rocks and everything. And when this dries, and you can put one coat or two coats, this is now going to be my second coat on this one. Um, it's going to be a very fine, sugar fine sparkle. It, you can see it now it's wet. It's not going to sparkle quite as much now while it's wet. It really needs to be dry before you'll see the sparkle. But it's going to glisten just not like snow glistens. And that's all that I did. The last thing I did was, of course, sign my name. But I think Frosty's girlfriend is done. Do we have any questions, Dylan? No, nope, we've got, just got some chatter about um, extreme glitter. So there's about, uh, I think there's a little over 10 colors in the line. Yes. People are asking. Um, and all the weather that's happening. There's oh, lots of yes. <laughs> um, comparisons across the, uh, the country tonight. But we're glad you guys could join us. Yeah, thank you so much. And I want to tell you that you'll want to mark your calendar now on a regular basis for uh, this month and into next month, too, because every Monday night, one of our content team members here will be here doing a uh, free Monday night paint night. So um, you'll want to grab your Let's Paint Live kit because we'll all be using the same kit of paints to make it easy for you. That kit also comes with a set of brushes too. So grab yourself that kit when they're on sale here at platonline.com and get a kit and join us every Monday night because we're going to have a fun painting lesson Andy Jones did last week and uh, his lesson is still available and tonight's lesson will be available too. They're all going to be stored in a playlist on YouTube and you'll be able to watch them all over again. So again, I'm Chris Williams. I hope you all enjoyed Frosty's Girlfriend tonight. I hope we all had a lot of fun together. I know I did sharing a lot of painting tips with you tonight. And I cannot wait to see your Frosty's Girlfriend. Remember to join Let's Paint with Plaid and post your projects using the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge. And if you post them in the Plaid Crafts area, just hashtag Plaid Crafts. 
We'd love to see your work, and thank you for joining us all tonight. And Dylan, thank you for helping to moderate tonight. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next Monday night.